Hey y'all, welcome to another episode of The Clever Dev, and today we're going to look at this very ugly material UI grid, figure out why it's so ugly, and uh, it's actually pretty interesting. This is the default as to how spacing or padding really works on the material UI grid items, um, and the interplay there between them and the material UI grid uh, container that wraps them. So another interesting thing, you may have expected these to be reading values that add up to 12 and and instead they add up to 16. Uh, we'll dig into why that is. There's some customization you can do. So if you want to learn all about this, stick around. Here we are with a grid that is very similar to the material UI grid, one of the material UI grid documentation examples. And uh, this grid in particular is similar to their multi breakpoint uh, example. So you can see that we've got XS and we've got MD on each of these. So what that means is that we've got this grid that's going to behave differently at different screen widths. So that's not really the focus of this video. What I actually care about is this grid, this wrapping grid has container prop set and each of these child grids, there's four of them, has the item prop set. What I care about and what I will explore with this video is the differences there and the props available uh, for each one. Um, so the props that go hand in hand with the container grid and the props that go hand in hand with the item level grid. So I'm going to go briefly through my setup that I have here. Um, first, I do have a little bit of styling already applied. Main reason for that is, is because I wanted this background color on here. And when we have the background color set, um, I'm adding, I'm passing that to the grid container through the SX prop, uh, which is new to material UI5 and it is really an a super useful prop. I love that new, the new styling API ha they have. Anyway, what that background color does is it allows us to really see the effects of any padding that we add. So right now, I do not have any padding passed via that styles. I will end up doing that and I'll tell you why. We'll add some padding right and padding bottom there. But first things first, um, let's see. Uh, importantly, you might notice that my XS and my MD values, um, they don't really make sense right now. Normally you see them maybe adding up to 12, like you might see something like this. Um, and then this one might be the other on a row. So these two would be kind of like two siblings on XS. This one would be on a small screen. This first one would be narrower and the second one would be wider. And then that would be flipped on a wide screen. And of course, this is just the text here. It doesn't actually have any impact. Um, but anyway, you notice that, or you may have noticed that I've got these values set differently. So the first prop that we'll look at briefly is just to get it all in working order, I'll actually add a columns prop and I'll set it equal to 16. I am pretty sure this is new to MUI5. Uh, I played with the grid quite a bit in MUI4 and I do not remember that prop, but I could be wrong. But anyway, um, so it's pretty, pretty useful. So let me actually just undo all this be faster that way and then I'll go back and add this columns equals 16 so let's actually take a look now uh, a little bit hard to see because we don't have any padding on here yet but I'm gonna examine this in the Dom that might make it pop a little bit more for us but what I care about um, so I've got two of these grid items that are um, on a line and I'm gonna just show it one more time that's this one and then this one they're they're in one line they have uh, a contents component inside of them once again pretty similar to the documentation um, example they called it item in there and I thought that was confusing so I basically just changed it it's basically a paper component with a little bit of styling on it so anyway let's take a look at the Dom what I care about is uh, we see that there is here we go there is an MUI grid dash container class and then on any grids that are items that have the item prop set we see MUI grid dash item. The grid is unusual in that it is a component that ultimately is composed of itself as subcomponents um, and just using different props to make different um, styling happen and different behavior. So I'm gonna pull my dev tools over and just take a look in here real fast. So you, you see that we get this styling from MUI grid dash root but there's not actually any styling directly applied by the container class. Pretty interesting there. What about our item? I see MUI grid dash root um, in two different spots. 
So kind of interesting there. So once again, uh, and, and we'll see this in a minute in case I re forget to open DevTools again. Item is actually, the MUI grid-item class is actually used primarily for a nested selector. So, um, well, yeah, I'll just show you in a moment. But first, let's take a look at this grid root on the items. Um, we see that there's flex basis 37.5% and max width 37.5%. On this one, it's 62.5 and 62.5. So you remember I set my columns to be out of 16 instead of out of 12. And this first child um, on medium screens, which is what we're looking at, has a value of 10. And the second one has a value of six. So what's going on over here is that we are at the, we based on the screen width, we've triggered the MD breakpoint, the medium breakpoint, not the excess. Um, and so this one is getting 10 sixteenths of the total available width. In percentage terms, 67.5%. So now uh, that's really all that's going, uh, excuse me, 62.5%. Like that's the core of Bootstrap or the core of MUI Grid. Is that simple? Like they have these nice breakpoints that are passed as props, um, but all they're doing is affecting the flex basis and max width. So if you understand that, you are good to go on how to use grids. Everything else is pretty much just icing on the cake. Um, really, most of it's dealing with padding after that. So uh, the next thing I'll look at is actually the spacing prop. I'm going to set it to 2. Uh, this is not 2px. In fact, it'll be 16px. So we can see padding left and padding top are now set. Looks a little nicer already. Um, not perfectly nice because it's kind of that ugly. Um, let's get this over in the right here. It's, it's kind of that ugly grid that I showed you initially. Um, but what's going on is just setting that spacing value. First, that automatically adds both padding left and padding top to each item. So it's a container level prop that affects the items or a grid container prop that affects the grid items. Kind of interesting. <clears throat> um, importantly though, I set a value of two for it. What that did is it actually reached into the theme uh, there's a system underlying the theme ultimately. So you pass in a value of one and I don't remember for sure, but I'd guess that actually applies a value of four PX when it comes to spacing. Two is obviously 16. Um, so you can actually adjust the theme and um, set your own values, but the default for spacing of two is actually to apply 16 PX for that value. So anyway, uh, pretty interesting that that's all that spacing is doing is it's applying that to the top and to the left of each item, which explains why we don't get any padding bottom or padding right. Um, the reason that they don't want to do any padding bottom or padding right is if they add padding right and padding left to each item, then they're going to get um, unintended spacing. Like here it'll be 16, but here it would be 16 plus 16, so 32. Um, your edges would look nice, but your insides wouldn't look so good. So. Um, you know what, I'll just take a break from the container, actually go up here and show you just real quick at some padding right of two, padding bottom of two. And here we are, easy as that to fix this. Let's take a look over down here at the um, dev tools. You can see that this is at the grid container, not the items, the container. We've got 16 and 16 here now, and that's adding a nice, um, I'm pointing at my screen and you can't see that, but it's adding a nice, almost like sideways L of padding uh, to compensate for the internal padding that's getting applied. So that's all you gotta do to fix that kind of uh, unusual issue. And like I said, the background color really makes all that pretty obvious. So that's why I did that. Um, that's actually all the styling that I'm gonna add at the grid styles level, but let's add a few more props down here um, real fast. So an alternative to the spacing, just a little bit of extra customization that they gave us is that you can do uh, row spacing. And so what that did is it added this padding top to each one. And I'm even gonna go in here, comment that out there. So you can see it added that nice padding top. And then we'll do column spacing. And that adds uh, the padding left 
to get us some spacing between our columns. So that's just an alternative to the spacing prop. My guess is that most people, um, unless they just wanted like, I don't know, wider columns than, than their row height or vice versa, uh, is that they'll just want to use this spacing prop here. So let's move on to the items. Uh, really, it's about the DOM for the items. There's not a lot of props available at the prop at the item level. Um, the big thing that I wanted to mention is just going over these XS and MD again. Notice how whatever siblings I have that I want to be on one line, um, I need the equivalent values to add up. So if I wanted on a small screen, if I wanted all of these on one line, might do something like that. Let's shrink it, see what happens. See, there we go. Um, this is kind of interesting. So I'm not gonna go into the code to demo it here, but um, another thing that we could, but one way to fix this text overflow issue that we have here is they've actually provided a no wrap. And it actually uh, is a little bit of finagling. There's a no wrap and a zero min width uh, just keep that in mind if you run into a sticky situation there. That's all in the docs. But really, the grid container and the grid items are very similar, uh, very similar DOM behavior. So um, I feel like a lot of times people see the breakpoints and kind of feel like there's an air of mystery about them, but there's really not. So um, I hope that this video was helpful for understanding the grid and how to use it properly and some of the props on it. So um, if it was helpful, please consider subscribing.